Hello and welcome back to Shakespeare. We are still working on Macbeth and today we get to get into Act 3, Scene 6. I was going to say we finish up Act 3, but we don't. There's a little bit more of Act 3 tomorrow. There's the response to what we get to hear today. But we get to hear from Lennox today, who kicks off the scene. Um, a little bit of recap just prior to this. So not only did Macbeth kill the King Duncan and his two guards, but he sent three murderers out to kill Banquo and Banquo's son, Fleance. They were successful in killing Banquo, but Fleance escaped. And then at this dinner party that Macbeth and his wife was, were throwing, Macbeth saw the ghost of Banquo, not once, but twice, and flipped out both times that he saw him and was like, you know, get you gone, get out of here, all that sort of stuff. And people thought that he was crazy and Lady Macbeth was just sort of trying to play it off like, oh yes, he does this sometimes. Um, but they decided that they would go to bed and that tomorrow he is going to go see the weird sisters again, the witches, uh, to see what else, what other prophecies they might have to share with him. And then yesterday we got to see the witches together where the like queen of the witches, Hecate, was very upset that, or maybe that was the day before. Anyway, we got to see that the queen of the witches was very upset at the fact that the other three had been messing with Macbeth because she wanted to be involved in it and she also doesn't quite think that Macbeth is worth his, worth any of their time. Um, but she's going to help them continue to mess with him when he comes to find out more about what's going on in his life tomorrow. So Act 3, Scene 6 is this little bitty scene between Lennox and some random lord. Lennox being a thane who was on Duncan's side. He's maybe a little bit younger. He's kind of on Macbeth's side at this point, um, though we'll find out more about him in this monologue. Um, but yeah, he and this lord are talking in the castle and this... To me, this this scene feels like the one that you would come back to after intermission because, well, he kicks off the scene by saying, my former speeches have but hit your thoughts, which can interpret farther. Only I say, things have been strangely born. The gracious Duncan was pitied of Macbeth. Mary, he was dead. And the right valiant Banquo walked too late, whom you may say, if it please you, Fleance killed, for Fleance fled. Men must not walk too late, who cannot want the thought, how monstrous it was for Malcolm and for Donalbane to kill their gracious father. Damn it, fact. How it did grieve Macbeth. Did he not straight, in pious rage, the two delinquents tear that were the slaves of drink and thralls of sleep? Was not that nobly done? Aye, and wisely, too, for it would have angered any heart alive to hear the men deny it. So that, I say, he has borne all things well, and I do think that had he Duncan's sons under his key, as, and please heaven he shall not, they should find what twere to kill a father. So should Fleance. But peace, for from broad words and cause he failed his presence at the tyrant's feast, I hear Macduff lives in disgrace. Sir, can you tell where he bestows himself? So this monologue, there's, it's, it's a recap. There's a bunch of like exposition in it that he already know. He, he, Lennox is talking to this Lord and he's like, yeah, um, Macbeth was so upset about Duncan's death. And there are people who think that Fleance maybe killed his father because he has run away. And Malcolm and Donalbane, who are Duncan's sons, also ran away. So people think that they killed their father. And wasn't it Macbeth that killed the two guards? And, and it was a good thing that he did because if they had tried to deny killing Duncan, like that would have just made everybody all the more angry. And, and maybe it's a good thing that Macbeth doesn't have... Um, Duncan's sons in his possessions right in his possession right now because they should be punished for killing their dad as should Fleance. But then he he shifts the subject and he's like, you know, so Macbeth or uh, Macduff didn't come to the dinner last night, so I hear he's sort of in hot water. Where is he? And we will find out how the Lord replies tomorrow because that's tomorrow's monologue. So I will see you then for that. Mwah.